These notes are on 2.6 derivatives of exponential functions. Before we start with this, um, which is, this is one of my favorite sections by the way because it's really cool, I want to look at um, a review of exponent rules so that we can see. So these are the basic ones and I know we practice them more in class but let's just kind of quickly go over them. If you have the same base and you're multiplying, all you do is you add your exponents. If you have the same base here and you're dividing them, we're going to subtract our exponents, which is pretty typical. Okay, This one's called power to the power. If I have a base with an exponent raised again to the next exponent, all you do is you multiply it. And so here I, we call this power to the power. Power raised to the power and then you always, this is just a review, you always multiply the exponents. These two here are one and the same except we have different bases. If your bases are different, now this is a little, this is a little bit harder because you don't do this, if you have different bases but your exponents are the same, okay, however your exponents are the same, whether you're dividing or multiplying you can rewrite it different ways. So let's look at this one. If I had two different bases, they're both raised to x. You can, and they're multiplying, you would multiply the bases raised to the x. And here, if they're dividing different bases raised to the same exponent, you can rewrite it this way. So this one's a little bit uncertain, a little more, people are a little more uncertain with it because they don't use it as much or they don't remember it because this you've seen for many, many years. This one right here, you know pretty well. So let's continue on with the derivative of exponents. So first of all, the exponent is in the form of a raised to the x, where a is your base and it is a number. So that's going to be a number. Your variable is your exponent. So an example of an exponential function would be something like 3 to the x. Okay? As we've been doing the power rule, so let's look at how this compares with a power function. This is different than a power function because the variable of a power function is the base. So an example of a power function would be x cubed, where your variable is the base and your number is the exponent. Okay? The slope of an exponential function becomes greater and greater if it's positive, which means your slope starts slowly. So your rate of change starts slowly and then it increases very rapidly. So exponential functions grow very rapidly, they decay re very rapidly because it's a change in your rate of change. So let's look at a couple shapes of exponential functions. And I've got some here that you can look at. So I have y equals 2 to the x, 3 to the x, and 10 to the x. And then here I've got 2 to the negative x, 3 to the negative x, and 10. So I've got here. And as you'll notice, as my base number increases, as does the steepness or how quickly it grows. Same with the decay or the negative x. Do you see how as the number is larger, it's still a sharper decay? So there's a shape, and it's bent because your rates of change or are changing. Now, let's go to how we derive the derivative. So here's a proof on how to show this. Now, I'm not going to bring up my calculator to show you, but you'll have to take my word for it. We're going to go through this. So if I had an x equals 0, we're going to use y equals 3 to the x. So I want to see if we can explore what the derivative would be. So, if I said if x equals 0, I'm approaching 0 of f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 all over h. So we're going back to the definition of the derivative. So I have the limit as h approaches 0 of 3 to the h, because it's 0 plus h, minus 3 to the 0 all over h. So all I did was my function of f is the 3 to the x. So I have 3 to the 0 plus h, I just didn't show the 0 minus 3 to the 0, okay, all over h, which is the same as saying the limit as h approaches 0 of 3 to the h minus 1 all over h. 
Now, there's no really algebra to do, so if you went into your calculator and you'd use the table method like we learned earlier this year, and we put in 3 to the x minus 1 all over x, and we went and looked at our table, and we got very, very close to 0, like 0 0.01, 0 0.001, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001, and so on and so forth, you'd see that you're going to approach point 1.0986. So I know when I did the derivative of y equals 3 to the x, I know this is what I got. I don't know what that means, but that's what I got. Now let's continue on because we want to see if we can find the derivative. If I did it with 2 and put f to 2 plus h minus f to 2 over h, put this in my calculator, so I'm doing the exact same thing again, but I'm using 2, I would get this one. I would get 9.88 and so on and so forth. If I put in a 1, oh, I skipped the 1, sorry. If I put in 1, I'd get 3.98. Okay, so let's summarize what I just did. If I put f prime is 0, I get 1.098. So f prime is 0 is 3 to the 0 times that. f prime of 1 is 3.298, so f prime of 1 is going to be that. And do you see how I keep using this as this power is going up and then I'm getting this 1.098. Well, what is the 1.098? Come to find out, the 1.098 is the natural log of 3. So it looks like you have your function right here, 3 to whatever, and it's ln whatever the base is. So I'm, excuse me, I'm going to do it like this. Let me erase that. So I'm going to call it, you'll have your function, your number raised to this power, times ln whatever this whatever this number is here and ln3 is 1.098 so what this is telling us in a roundabout way is when I do the derivative of an exponential function it is you rewrite that function over again and ln the base see how this happened I have this function and I'm lning that 3 because ln3 is 1.098 so let's look at the derivative. So if I had f of x equals a to the x, so this is something that's got to go to your card. You have f of x is a to the x, then f prime of x is going to be a to the x ln a. Rewrite it. So this is how I always tell my students. Rewrite your function natural log the base. Okay? ln means natural log. Now, that's with any function, a is a number, 1, 2, 3, 4, continue on. But if you had e to the x, and remember what e is, it's what we've done before, it is your natural exponential function. If I wanted to find this, because e is a number, wanted to do that, I'd say e to the x, ln e. Well, we all know that ln e is 1, natural log of e, because it undoes it, the natural log of a natural exponential, they cancel each other, so you have e to the x. So that is very cool that if I do the derivative of e to the x, I get it back. I get it back, so it's pretty cool. So the next thing I want to talk about is some practice with this, and I want to look at some functions so you can see what's going on here. So I have y equals 2 to the x here, and it tells me here at this line the slope is 0.7. And then I, if I do e to the x, which remember e is 2.71 on and on, so it's a little bit steeper slope, and then I've got 3. So I've got 2, e to the x is between 2 and 3, as you can see. So look what happens to the slope. The slope is getting a little bit steeper. Well, let's figure out how we would actually come up with that tangent line that's there. So I want to find what that tangent line is. So I know my functions y equals 2 to the x. Because I just learned how to do the exponential derivative, I know y prime is rewrite the function ln the base. Okay? So if I wanted to find at 0, okay, when x is 0, what the slope is, because they told I would say y prime is going to be 2 to the 0 ln 2. And 2 to the 0 is 1, so I have the natural log of 2, which comes out to be 0.7.
Now if I wanted to actually find that equation of that tangent line for A, I'd say y minus y1 equals mx minus x1, and I would see y minus 1, because this is the point 0, 1, equals the slope, which is the natural log of 2, going to be here, natural log of 2, times x minus 0. So all we need to do is bring that 1 over. I'll say y equals natural log, and I like putting the x in front, x natural log of 2, and this is a 0, so I don't have to worry about it, plus 1. So that's the equation of that tangent line. Let's look at this one. This one, they said the slope is 1. Let's look at it. So I have y equals e to the x. If I do y prime, it's rewrite it, e to the x, ln e, which is 1. So I know that that's what the derivative is. Now the point zero, 1 is again on this one here, and I want to do the equation of the tangent line. So I got y minus 1 equals now when I put a 1 in here, e to the first power is just e, excuse me. If I put e to the 0 power there, not first, but 0, because it's x is 0, I apologize for that. It comes out to be 1, then my slope is 1 times, and then my x minus 0. And if you'll see, I add 1 over here, you'll see that y equals x plus 1, because the slope is 1. Here I have y equals 3 to the x, y prime is 3 to the x ln 3. If I want to do y prime of 0, I have 3 to the 0 ln 3, so I see that ln 3 is the slope. I do the same thing, y minus, because I still go through the point, 0, 1, equals ln 3, x minus 0. So again, we have x ln I should put 3 there, x ln 3 plus 1. Okay, so that just kind of shows you how to use the derivatives. Now when we go through and do this, this is not going to take very long to do these because doing, um, I, I really enjoy doing these kind of derivatives, they're kind of fun. But I want to go through this with you make sure you understand. So I have f of x equals 2 to the x, and remember we're going to use the rule if y equals a to the x, y prime is a to the x ln a, or rewrite it ln the base. So f prime of x here is going to be rewrite it ln the base. f prime of x here is going to be rewrite it ln the base. So that's an easy way to start. Let's go down here. Now I have more terms in here. Let's look at each one of them. So I have y prime here, and I have a 3 there, and this looks like it's multiplication, but remember, if you did the product rule here, you'd get a 0, so we can just leave the, the coefficient there. So I go 3, and then this is really 7 to the x ln 7. So I'm just going to do right this way, 7 to the x ln 7, because it looks weird to me to have that 3 next to you, and I'll show you how to rewrite it, plus 6, and the derivative e to the x is e to the x, so 6 e to the x plus, and this is power rule, 8x. Now, I rewrite this because it looks very strange to me. You can either use this in parentheses or, because this is a number and this is a number, I usually put them together and say 3 ln 7 in front, 7 to the x plus 6 e to the x plus 8x. That is correct, but it just looks a little bit better to have all your coefficients together. I have this one here. I have ln 5 raised to the t. Well, it doesn't matter what this is. This is really a, a number raised to an exponent. So if I do y prime, I rewrite it ln the base, okay? This does not mean that this is ln squared. It's natural log of natural log of 5. And you leave it just like that. Now let's try f of x equals e to the x minus 3. So f prime of x. Well, before I do that, I'm like, I'm not for sure because I haven't done something like that. So we can split it up and say that's the same as saying e to the x 
times e to the negative 3. Because if I multiplied these same bases, I could add them. This in itself is a number or a coefficient, if you will. So when I do um, f prime of x, I'm going to basically say, I'm going to write the number in front, and then the derivative e to the x is itself, so you end up getting the same thing back, e to the x minus 3. I just wanted to show you how that came about. Now we have a neat one where we're doing actually the quotient rule with a exponential function. So there's my f and g's, so f equals e to the x, f prime is also e to the x, g is going to be x, and g prime, because of the power rule, is 1. So I have f prime of x is f prime g, so put the x in front, x e to the x, minus f g prime, which is just e to the x, all over g squared was x squared. And the only difference I do with here, because this is a term and this is a term, I always like to have things in factored form whenever possible. See how this term and this term both have e to the x in it? So I'm going to factor it out. So I have e to the x, and when I do, I have x, e, x minus 1 all over x squared. So that's that derivative. Let's do a couple more for practice. Ooh, this one looks a little bit more complicated. and It has pi in it and e. So the first thing I recognize is this is right here, the product rule. So I'm going to call this f and this g. So if f is e to the theta, f prime is e to the theta. Okay, so that one's easy. Let's look at g. Now the one thing about g is I'm going to write it the way it is. Here's g is 1 over theta squared plus theta to the negative pi over 2. g prime, okay, well, before that, let's rewrite this before we do the derivatives, maybe so you'll understand. So let's do g again. I can rewrite this as theta to the negative 2 plus theta to the negative pi over 2. And remember, okay, when you look at this, theta is your variable. This is the power rule, okay? So this can be negative 2 theta to the negative 3 minus pi over 2, theta, and then subtract 1, negative pi over 2 minus 1. I know it looks nasty, but that's what it is. So let's look at this one. This one makes you think a little bit. So I'm going to do r prime is f prime g. So I'm going to use the original g. So f prime is e to the theta times 1 over theta squared plus theta to the negative 1 half. I'm just using negative pi over 2, plus f g prime, okay, so plus f, which is e to the theta, g prime is this, and I'm going to rewrite it like this, negative 2 over theta cubed, I'm just rewriting this term right here, if you can see what I'm doing, I just put the theta and the denominator, okay, um, minus pi over 2, theta to the negative pi over 2 minus 1. Okay, so this is like an exponent. Let's put parentheses around that. And let's look at what we can do for this. And I said, well, you know what's cool? I have a term here and a term here. And if you'll notice here in this term and this term, I have right here e to the theta is in both of them. So I'm going to factor that out. Okay? So if I r prime is going to be e to the theta, and then I'm going to have 1 over theta squared plus theta to the negative pi over 2 minus 2 over theta cubed minus pi over 2 theta negative pi over 2 minus 1. That's the exponent there, okay? Now, all I'm doing here, basically, is I'm trying to pull things out one at a time so you can see what I'm doing. I look at that I can pull out a, if it looks like it would work out okay, if I pulled out a theta to the negative pi out of, over 2 out of that. So if I did that for each one of these, it's going to look a little bit messy, but we can pull out each one of them. We can pull out a theta to the negative pi over 2 out of there. Or this right here, we can leave 
as it goes. I'm going to probably go over in class because I want to make sure that you understand how I would do that. You can really pull that out of each one of them, but for right now we're going to leave this as it is as your answer and we'll talk about how to simplify that a little bit more in class to make it look a little bit nicer. Okay? Now, what is the difference between pi to the, to the x versus x to the pi? So you got to look at what we have here. So exponential versus basically a power function. We got to be able to tell the difference, okay? Which one's exponential? Well, pi to the x is exponential because this is a number raised to a variable. A power function has your variable in the bottom, so there is x to the pi. Okay? So if this is x to the pi and this is pi to the x, you're going to treat them different. If this was exponential, what you do is you rewrite your function ln the base. It's the natural log of the base. If it's power function, when you do y prime, you're going to use a power rule and bring it down front. Pi times the 1 is pi, x to the pi minus 1. Just so you see the differences between what you would get for an answer versus exponential versus power. All right. Now I'm going to do a word problem here. I think this is one of the last problems we have, yes, before our lab, to show you how you can use this in applications. All right. So I have a certain radioactive substance that decays according to this formula where T is in 0 in 1990. So that's our time, our beginning time, and Q is in grams. So I always like to label the crap out of this. So Q, this is in grams, and time is in years. Okay? So it says, what is the amount present in 2010? Well, since, oh, this is since 1990. We should write that here, since 1990. So I want to know how much, what is present? How much of this amount is present in 2010? Well, the amount that's present is going to be after how many years, but this is since 1990. So I'm going to say, well, 2010 minus 1990, because that's when time is zero. That is 20 years. So all I'm going to do is I want to find the quantity in 23 years. So it's in 20 years, so I do 23, 0.82 raised to the 20. And when I get that, it's 0.435 grams that are present in 2010. So I actually found the amount that was present then. This next question, you have to know what you're dealing with, says at what rate is it decaying? At what rate? So now we're talking the derivative. So I have to do the derivative of this. Now Q prime is going to be, now my original is here, up, you can't really see it, but it's Q equals 23. 0.82 to the t. So my original is here. I realize it's an exponential function. The 23 is like a coefficient. So my q prime is going to be 23, rewrite the function, ln the base. It's a t. ln 0.82. So there's my derivative. Now they want to know at what rate is it decaying. So I'm just going to put q prime of t. So in 20 years, they want to know how much is actually decaying, decaying in 2010. I put a 20 here. Okay? When I do, I get this number. When I throw this in my calculator, negative 0.08623. Now the units, because this is a derivative, are going to be in grams per year. Okay, so the difference is when I put it here, I found out what was left in 20 years. This tells you how much is decaying that year. So basically, it's decaying negative 0.08623 grams per year from... 2010 to 2011, okay? So that tells you the actual rate. That's the difference. Okay, that is the beginning of your exponential functions derivatives.